tremendous legacy in the history of women's sport was reaffirmed in a golden moment. And provided a storybook ending to remarkable careers. So as they walk away from the game, the baton must now pass to the next generation of U.S. women's soccer. Christy Welsh, Massapequa Park, New York, 24, forward. Lori Klopney, St. Louis, Missouri, 21, defender. Heather O'Reilly from East Brunswick, New Jersey, 20 years old, forward. Hope Solo, Richard Washington, 23 years old, goalkeeper. Amy LaPelvet, Crystal Lake, Illinois, 23 years old, defense. And welcome to Virginia Beach, Virginia, where today a tremendous amount of rain has been falling in the air. It is gray and dark, but it is still a day where the United States, in their first domestic opportunity, taking on Canada at the Virginia Beach Sportsplex. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Glenn Davis. It certainly is a time of transition now for the U.S. women's national team. Veterans have moved on. Veterans have retired. And it's time now for fresh and young faces. Before we look at those fresh and young faces, it's important to remember what the past brought us. Players like Mia Hamm, players like Joy Fawcett, and players like the quiet one. Here we go! What you get? Here we go! I won the toss! Here we go! And the quiet one joins us in the booth right now and dresses up pretty good. We welcome in two-time yeah. Olympic gold medalist and former U.S. Captain Julie Foudy. I even showered for you today, then. Julie, <laughs> what direction are we going in now with the U.S. Women's National Team under Greg Ryan? Well, we've got a brand new coach, which is exciting for the team. A lot of new faces like you talked about. But when you have a new coach, he comes in with new ideas, new ideas on players, systems. So really, of these 24 players in here for the Virginia Beach camp, only 11 from the Olympic team. So it's going to be exciting to see what the U.S. Uh, plays out there. He has at his disposal one of the meanest and toughest strikers in the world, Abby Wambach. Abby Wambach is just phenomenal because she brings so many dimensions to the game. She's physical, she's strong, she's incredible in the air, and then you can see she's fearless, so she goes for every ball, she, she leaves everything on the field, so difficult to contain her. She is a player that today will pose problems for Canada, 59 caps, 47 goals, an amazing goal scoring record, an opportunity to new, see new faces, and Abby Wambach coming up next. Canada and the U.S. on ES. ESPN2. Smooth from the first taste. Refreshing every single time. The great taste of Bud Light. The summer is calling, and so are the friends. Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. Sport is sport. A foul's a foul. And a bat's a bat, even if it's flat. Ten feet on the west side is ten feet on the east side. Football is football. Unless it's football. Now, a win's a win. A loss is a loss. But no matter what, you better come with it. Because it's 90 feet to first, no matter where home is. Chevy's proud to have the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And Suburban, ranked highest in initial quality. We've always broken the rules. Now we're rewriting them. Introducing for the first time ever, the Chevy employee discount for everyone. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. Now get an 05 Silverado half-ton base five-speed work truck two-wheel drive for a Chevy employee discount price of 13842 after cash back. See you, Texas Chevy dealer. For a good, good Toyota World has three ways to save. New double cab Tundra, zero down payment and just $2.69 a month. New 05 Corolla, zero down payment and just $2.39 a month. Drive Camry, zero down payment and just $2.79 a month. Fred Haas Toyota World has low payments on over 25 acres of new Toyotas because we know price sells cars and it's Fred Haas's goal to save every buyer $2,000. Click on FredHaasToyota.com and come by Fred Haas Toyota World. You've got to see this place. Welcome back to Virginia Beach and the Virginia Beach Sportsplex. Ardent U.S. fans braving the weather here to see the United States take on Canada. New look under Greg Ryan. They started off today, Julie, in a lineup that is a 4-3-3. Playing a 
33 for the United States, and you see Kate Markgraf, the lone veteran on the back line, leading that back line. Pinched in three in the midfield with Christine Lilly and her 296 international parents. And then the Twin Towers up top, and Abby Wambach and Christy Welsh. And of course, Lynn, the surprise start for the evening, afternoon, Amy LaPelvich, the seventh international appearance for this team, usually a center back. Going to the outside today in only her seventh international appearance. Outside back positions, a point of contention for head coach Greg Ryan as he continues to look at young players like Lapelbeck, a maturing, strong young defender. When we come back, opening kickoff. Why isn't there a DVD recorder so easy to use that I don't hear Dad say words I'm not supposed to hear? Why isn't their defibrillator so easy to use that almost anyone can use it? Why can't technology be as simple as the box it comes in? We think technology should simplify life, not complicate it. I've got a to-do list that's a mile long and an entire weekend to trim it down. Don't put off the project. Put off the payments. Right now at the Home Depot, get no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases store-wide of $2.99 or more when you use your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. Plus, get free assembly with the purchase of select gas grills so you can get cooking quicker. But hurry, these offers end soon. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Welcome back to the Virginia Beach Sportsplex. Glenn Davis and Julie Foudy. Canada and the United States getting set to get underway. And, of course, a number of big stars have retired from the United States women's team, like my partner, Julie Foudy. But one that was a bit controversial, Brandi Chastain, not included in this squad. No, Brandi actually wanted to continue to play with the national team, and I had a chance to talk to Coach Greg Ryan uh, last night about his decision not to bring her back, and he said, I just don't see her having a future with this team. And, and Glenn, my issue with with all this I know it's caused a lot of debate and stirred a lot of passion is that here this Brandy Chastain has given 17 years to this team has been wonderful for the sport and has done so many things I just felt she deserved a right to come in and show um, show how she can play last time she played she was a starter in the gold medal match in, in Athens so um, she's brought so much to this game to the sport I feel like she's earned that right she deserves that respect and then you know coach Ryan can make his decision on where she's at but her last game remember was the Olympic gold medal match United States in white, Canada in red, and it's game on here in Virginia Beach. The U.S. and Canada. And rain has seemed to lighten up here a little bit, but it has been a steady rain since this morning. And this tends to always be a very physical confrontation between the U.S. and Canada. The last time these teams met was July 3rd, 2004, where the U.S. got a 1-0 victory over Canada in Nashville, Tennessee. Pelbit drives that one forward. The target was Wambach. And as Canada knocking it forward. And it is certainly a team, Julie, that is capable on the counterattack. We'd like to thank Bud Light and all of our U.S. soccer sponsors for allowing us to bring you this game without interruption. Get a good look there at Brittany Timko. Canada will get the throw. Let's take a quick look at the Canada lineup, and it is a team that is very direct, Julie, and a team that certainly uh, has a lot of strength and power in a 4-3-3. And they are playing a 4-3-3 like the United States. Karina LeBlanc, a veteran for them in goal. Their back line, Kara Lang, the 18-year-old sensation that's going to UCLA next year. And they're also playing a pinched-in three in the midfield. You'll see it's very compacted in the midfield with the United States playing three midfield. They're playing a three midfield. Amy Walsh returning a veteran from Canada, returning for a game. And then up top, you have a very good three front line in Christine Sinclair and Thorlikson, who is the star from Notre Dame. NCAA leader in goals and assists this year with 23 goals and 24 assists. Just a phenomenal college season for her. Thorlikson getting her eighth cap today. 
for Canada. If we talk about these two teams, the conditions here today weather-wise, favors the U.S. or Canada? Uh, I would say it definitely favors Canada. They like to uh, play a less technical, more direct game. And we'll get back to that in a moment as the U.S. on the attack here, and that one broken up by Canada. Great ball in by Christine Lilly. And that was 18-year-old Kara Lang, who you just alluded to, who broke that play up. As, of course, Christine Lilly, the leader for the United States with 296 caps, the most capped player both on the male and female side. One of the Fab Five still remaining out there. And there you get a, a great early look at Lori Kolupny, the outside left back for the United States, playing a new position for her, only her 14th cap with the United States. And Greg Ryan certainly taking a look at people at both outside back positions. Canada now on the attack. This is Timko. Tries a direct route there, trying to pick out Christine Sinclair. And always in a game like this, in the first five minutes when it's wet and slippery, you know, you're just trying to establish your, your rhythm. And with the United States, that's critical because, like I said, Canada plays a very direct. They like to get physical. The more contact, the better. So for the United States, they're trying to find their footing in this first five minutes. Right. Here's Lily now. Slips a good ball in, but LeBlanc, who has the reputation for playing off her line there, covering nicely for Canada. No problem. Christine Lilly, 296 cap today, 103 goals. Game conditions today, as we mentioned, a lot of rain in the area. 73 deg degrees, very slick conditions, and uh, quite humid as well. As Hermes clearing the area for Canada. Despite the conditions, will the U.S. be able to still play things on the floor and build the game up like they normally like to do? Well, that's critical for the United States' success is they've got to dictate their own rhythm. If they get into that long ball game, then it's to Canada's favor. So with this wet surface, it makes it a little more difficult, no question. Imco was chasing there. It goes all the way back to Hope Solo and goal. But you can see already Canada dropping into a low-pressure formation defensively, which give our back four. The United States is back four, a lot of time on the ball, a lot of time to play make. I talked last night with Greg Ryan. He mentioned the fact that a lot of times they'll stand players on the two outside backs and force the center backs to be the players that have to build the attack out of the back for the United States. And here comes the U.S. around the corner here. Wombach getting into the box just over her head. Uh, the U.S. gaining an edge down that left side. And this is exactly what Heather O'Reilly can bring to the game. She is a young, fast, very penetrative forward who loves to take on, tries to send it across the box, no one making that far post run, but already Heather O'Reilly getting into the mix, wasn't sure if she was going to get the start today, and she was so excited, I ran into her this morning, Glenn, she had this big old grin on her face, she said, this is what I've been training for, right here. A lot of U.S. Women's National Team players around the hotel with big smiles on their face these days. It is a time of opportunity. No question. A lot of new faces, they all know this is a time to evolve, you know. Coach Greg Ryan has got to pick a whole new crop of players here. We've got three years before the next World Cup, and this is the time to show them what we got. Get Reddick with the long throw. Here's Wambach now. Trying to get in behind Hermes. Reddick tackled away. Shannon Box will go back. Lapelbin. Margraf now. And expected to take on more of a leadership role at the back. Her direct ball over the head of Wambach all the way to LeBlanc. This portion of the match presented by Home Depot. In Pellerud, the Canada coach used to be the head coach of Norway, led him to a World Cup win in, in 2003 led Canada to their best ever finish in a World Cup, coming in fourth place, losing in the third place game to the U.S., and he's brought Norwegian tactics. He has definitely brought Norwegian tactics. I mean, he had such, such a successful run with the Norwegian team, winning the 1995 World Cup with Norway, and he's brought that same system and style to the Canadian team. Canada here into the box. And dangerous ball just floating over the head of Hope Solo. You told me, though, this team, you don't feel, is as dangerous as Norway yet, the Canadian national team? Not yet. I think they have a lot of very good athletes on the team. I mean, the, the Norwegian team is legendary. They've been dominating the women's game for years. Canada, the sport is growing 
quickly in their country, but still they don't have the technical players yet that uh, you get in co combination with Norway. With the direct play, the tall, the physical players, they also have a lot of technical skills. So I think that's the next stage, not just athletic fast players, but also some technical tactical players. Beautifully measured ball from Margraf. And this time it's Redick who has got power over distance and lays a beautiful ball over there to Lilly now. And a big tackle in there from Sophie Schmidt of Canada. And we just saw some great accuracy out of the back from the United States. And you can see the United States early on trying to launch some balls over the back line of Canada. They're trying to spread them out. Canada likes to play a very compact defensive back line. They squeeze that back four up so that doesn't give the United States a lot of room to play. Into the box it comes. And headed away by the U.S. But more pressure from Canada now. Timko lets a shot go off the mark. ESPN's, ESPN 2's presentation of U.S. soccer is brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. And Phillips. Technology should be as simple as the box it comes in. Good look at Shannon Box speaking of boxes. And boy, the... Uh, player now epitomizing that defensive holding midfield role around the world. Uh, no LeBanc again off her line. Shannon Box has so many attributes similar to, to Michelle Akers. And, you know, she's, she's hard, she's physical, she's tackling. Half the time she spends the, the game, uh, you know, on the ground. And yet, She's got this great technical savvy as well. She's able to play make. She's able to slow the game down and calm us. And, and, and to find that combination in players is something we've been looking for for a long time in the, in the, in the center of midfield. And, you know, I wasn't going to be the one kicking players. So we needed, uh, we needed someone in there who's going to give us that defensive presence. And, and, uh, and Shannon Box has done just that. She's been phenomenal for us. And, Glenn, the great story about Shannon is she, she makes the 2003 World Cup team without having, having even played for the United States. A and player that allows others to attack and a player that also is a threat from deep. I think we forget that sometimes with the label of defensive midfielder. Oh, yeah. Box has 45 caps, earning her 46 today, and has also scored 12 goals from that position. So uh, she's not just a hitter and a tackler. She brings a lot more. And, you know, the league with the WSA, that's the wonderful thing of having the league is she was able to develop her game and get a second life with the league. She wasn't enough with our youth program. This one hit over the top by Wambach. Julie, you came up with four points today for fans to look for. I'm going to pretend like I'm a coach for a second. Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. Pouty's four. The center midfielders in a 4-3-3 system, which both teams are playing, critical for those attacking center midfielders to get in behind the other uh, opponent's defense. Amy LaPelvet and, and Laura Kalepny, two outside backs. Combination between them, not even 20 caps. Seeing how they're doing today. And then again, the same formation, but very contrasting styles like we talked about lately. And then, of course, the X Factor, Tiffany Milberg back. 199 international appearances, 99 goals. If she gets in today, she's going in for 200 international appearance. We heard she's going to make an appearance, we hope. And also hope she can get to her. Opportunity here for the United States off the long throw from Reddick. And the U.S. will earn a corner here with this extended pressure. And as you mentioned, Tiffany Milbritt, it would be her 200th appearance story. And if she were to score today, it would be her 100th goal. Ali Wagner. Actually, that was Wamba. Now in the box, Wagner to take the corner. U.S. has good targets in there with Box and Wambach. Canada headed out. Chance at the top of the box here. Shot and a goal. The United States go up 1-0. Maury Kalupny. The 21-year-old has struck first. What a great finish for Maury Kalupny. Exactly what you want to see from a player on top of the box. You're going to clean up anything that's coming out. She takes a nice first touch, and the goal is just get it on target, especially on a wet day like this. She doesn't get a lot behind it, but it's so hard for a keeper to see with all those players in front of her. She places it so nicely. Kalupni, in the corner. Kalupni started all four matches at the Algarve Cup, and maybe right now, at least in this moment, 
is the answer at left back for Greg Ryan in the U.S. national team. Well, Greg Ryan decided to play her at left back for the first time ever in her career. She'd never been a defender. She did play an outside left midfield position. She plays it at North Carolina. And in North Carolina, with their system, it's pretty much you're playing the left back position when you're playing in that type of system because you're having to balance all the way back and get all the way forward. So the element she brings is that she can attack. She can score goals. I mean, you see it right here. It's only her 14th international appearance. She's already got two goals. Another long throw from Kat Reddick, and the U.S. had some chances off it before. Now, do you like the fact that she's got to come out all the way out of the middle to take these throws positionally? Well, with, with Canada not playing a high striker right now, you can be more aggressive defending your defenders, taking throw-ins, getting forward. Wagner gets it switched nicely. Wombat left it for Lilly, broken up there by Hermes. Pelvic brings it down calmly. Shannon Box now. Box through midfield to Lilly. And Lilly couldn't control it. Uh, fights and wins it back. As it's obvious the U.S. fighting spirit has not left with names like Foudy, Ham, Fawcett, and Chastain. Oh, uh, that will always be the foundation of this team. You know, it's this blue collar work ethic. And the challenge is you just got to add sophistication to that all the time. You just can't outwork them. You got to outthink them as well. Here's Kalupny now as the game's lone goal. Draws two, creates some space for herself. Tried to get it into the box. Good work from her again as she got forward. And it's so natu natural for her to get forward, Lori Kalupny. She's used to that patient position. Like I said, in North Carolina, she plays a left midfield position. She's always getting to the end line. Anton Dorrance, the very successful head coach there, is constantly emphasizing to his players, I want you facing up and taking on. And you're going to see her bring that from the left back position, which is exactly what the United States needs. Candace Chapman to take this free kick. Also out of Notre Dame. And a dangerous ball here. Solo's off her line. Canada gets it over. Flying header there to clear. And a big play from Kalupni. As Canada proving a threat going the other way. And this is where Canada is always so dangerous. They're always around, always scrapping, getting that half chance, getting that second ball. And you see a little bit of a communication issue with the new goalie, Hope Solo, who's started at all the games of the Algarve Cup, but hasn't played much in goal for the United States. Something to work on. Obviously, a friendly is where you want to do that. This portion of the match is presented by Gatorade. Canada will get a free kick here. And Glenn, you'll see with both teams, like we talked about in the beginning, playing a 4-3-3 formation, you have six central midfielders jammed in the middle of the field. So really the gaps in the games are going to be on the outside flank, in between, like at the center of the field, in between the forwards and the defenders. Who can get into those gaps is going to be critical. Simcoe will get it over. Canada loading up the box now. Walsh is in there. Berlickson is in there. They whip it in, headed out by Reddick. Powerful header there. Here's Wamba trying to win it back. And Ali Wagner going to lob it into space. Can Ali Wamba get there? No. Sinclair, some good covering position there, but an awkward clear will give the U.S. the throw here in the 16th minute. O'Reilly tried the quick one to Wamba. And again, we'll leave it. So it's an obvious weapon here, Kat Reddick, getting forward to take these long throws, Julie. She has a good long throw in. And also, the front line of Canada is dropping all the way back. You don't want to keep four defenders back. You can get them forward into the mix here. Long throw target is long back. He's going to try and help it on. Wagner flicks it to herself, lets a volley go. What a nice piece of creative work from Ali Wagner. Well, today we're trying something a little different. We have outfitted Christine Lilly with a GPS unit, and with it, we're going to track her total mileage running this match. So today we'll give you a, a little reading at halftime, and we'll give you a, a reading at the conclusion of the game and see how much leg work Christine it. Lilly does. I love this pretty technical. I wanted one of those things for years. First game out. You guys find it, Glenn. 
You gotta love it. I mean, yeah, that would blow all my theories, though. I'd say, oh, I'm running at least a marathon a game in here. I'm doing all the work in the midfield. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if you put that thing on, you're all of a sudden gonna start running more. <laughs> Top a of the box. Of motivational factor, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Wagner, and it was behind. Abby Wambach goes all the way back to LeBlanc. This portion of the match is presented by Phillips. Two really good looks at the creativeness of Allie Wagner. Flipping one over her head to then take a shot. Another one where she's trying to slip someone in behind. She's an incredible playmaker for the United States. Reddick broke that up. O'Reilly was there. Lily trying to fight her way through a very congested midfield. The Pelpit, the youngster in the start. And Lewis will get a throw. O'Reilly couldn't control that one. So most of these players now, without the WUSA, finding other ways really to stay fit and train, Julie. It's such a challenge. It kind of reminds me of how we used to be. You know, there was no league. You had to find where, you know, where to play, who to play with. You had to run on your own. And, and it's, a, it's a real challenge. This is the fewest number of games we've had in a year, with only nine this year since 1992. Will self-motivation play a big part in who makes this final team ultimately when we get to the 2007 World Cup in China. Uh, no question. It wasn't a coincidence that you had players like Mia Hamm and Joy Fawcett staying on the team for 17 years. Wamba. O'Reilly. Christine Lilly, who's floated over to the right side, goes back to Reddick. LaPelbeck. The defeat of O'Reilly. Oh, U.S. maybe wants to get it switched here. Wamba. And Lily's going to try and do that. Back to Reddick. Golupny is flaring out on the left, and Reddick will find her. Timko closing her. And the U.S. will get another throw. Good start for the United States. Good start. I'd love to see them get a little more aggressive with sending their outside backs forward. Canada is playing such a low pressure defense. You've got to get in behind that first line of theirs. Margra. Expected to take over more of a leadership role. And Kat Reddick, everybody thinks she's young, earning her 79th cap today, which is pretty amazing. Here's Lily, speaking of caps. Got more than any player in the world. Yeah, Kat Reddick and Kate Markgraf in the center of our back line gives us great consistency. Boy, did they have a great Algarve cup. Over the top they go to Wambach, it's going to skip to LeBlanc. He's playing way off the line, and you might think today if somebody gets a, their head up, they might try her over the top. And so it's always a, a good thing to look for. And with her back line stepping, Karina LeBlanc's Canada stepping aggressively, keeping the game compact, she's got to come off and play a really aggressive style and come in behind them as well. Welsh had a tackle away. Was the leading scorer for the United States when they won the Algarve Cup in March. When unscored upon and beat Germany 1-0 in the final. Free kick now for Canada. After Margraf called for the foul. Spent the spring playing in Sweden with Christine Lilly. So there's another way that some of the U.S. women have been staying fit. Go overseas, play with the boys, anything you can do. Ali Wagner told me she's hitting the ball against the wall every day. She's getting a little bored with that. Walsh and Sinclair, big targets in the box for Canada now. They drive it in, good looking ball. And Fox gets there first. Lily sticks a beautiful ball towards the corner flag just to turn the Canadian defense and get the U.S. out. Canada getting some early good looks at some free kicks. Dangerous on a day like this. Into the box. It's wet. It's slippery. Where's that second, third ball going to go? That is where they're brilliant at picking up those loose balls. Nice touch from Wamba. O'Reilly, can she get it over? Crossing opportunity here for the U.S. And cruising in was Christy Welsh out of Penn State. After that delivery. From O'Reilly, the three strikers combine on that one, Julie. Christy Welsh is thinking, I can't get a better look than this today. Great first touch by Heather O'Reilly, bringing it straight onto her head. Just a beautiful ball in. Unfortunately, Christy Welsh can't get down on the ball. Sees the keeper coming. That may have an impact. It's right over that bar. Box heads it back in. Welsh trying to get there. LeBanc off her line. 
But nobody there for the U.S. as they look dangerous again. And again, you're seeing a very aggressive Karina LeBlanc coming way off her line. Risk versus reward. You don't want to do that too aggressively. You'll see there she missed the ball. Creates a dangerous situation for Canada. This portion of the match is presented by Bud Light. Here's Margraf now. And maybe when the team had dominant personalities like yourself and Mia Hamm and Joy Fawcett, maybe she didn't have to step up as a leader. And apparently now she's expected to do more of that. Oh, yeah. And, and you'll see, that, you know, for so long they've been talking about the veterans, these younger kids haven't been given credit for the leadership they bring, the skill they bring, the talent. And, and these, it's so natural for them. They've been doing it on the under-19 teams. They've been doing it on the under-21 teams. They'll step into that position very naturally. And, of course, the winning culture, the whole attitude, all I'm hearing from the young players is what they got from players like you. That's because we pay them a lot of money. we got to say nice things. It's amazing how far $20 goes once in a while. No, but in all reality, uh, they step into an incredibly competitive winning culture when they step into the U.S. women's national team. Off the throw, target was Wamba. Welsh was in an offside position. We are in Virginia Beach, Virginia. It's the United States, a 1-0 lead over Canada. Lori Kalepny, we are at the Virginia Beach Sportsplex. Glenn Davis and Julie Fatty, hope you're enjoying this one. And kind of a glimpse into the future today of what the U.S. women's national team is going to look like in the future under new head coach Greg Ryan. Wamba coming deeper into midfield now. And I think we need to point out, Julie, the amount of international games that Canada has played as late. They've taken two trips to Europe and have played seven matches, far more than the U.S. over the last couple months. This is their eighth international game, like you just said, in two months. And playing Germany, Denmark, France, I mean, some of the best in Europe. We haven't played a game since the Algarve Cup in March. a three-month off game rhythm right now, which isn't ideal for the United States. Greg Ryan really has had limited training sessions with the U.S. Women's National Team. Gets six or seven days before the Algarve Cup and six or seven days before this game today. And they are going to have two more games, July 10th and July 24th. So we'll get a so the United States will get a three-game rhythm. Headed out firmly by Canada. Good defensive clear there. Lily brings it down. Self pass to herself and tried to beat two. What an effort from Christine Lilly. Showing a bit of uh, creative edge there. Big play from Shannon Box right there, epitomizing how she slows down attacks from teams around the world. Just to call it the counter stopper. She just kill every counter. Box. She's got room to switch it. Better do it quickly. She was pressed there by number 16, Borlickson. Wambach. Tackled away there and by Sophie Schmidt. And Glenn, you'll see the huge gaps there. Lori Kolopny having so much time and space there. Wambach drives it in and took a deflection. The U.S. will get a corner. The United States will be looking for their twin towers. They got a lot of tall players on that front line. And Abby Wambach, Christy Welsh. You also have Shannon Box, who's always great in the air. Lily to take the corner. Cat Reddick. Drives it towards the back post. Box is there. Chapman tried to get it cleared. Canada can't get out. Another chance for Wagner right on, but right at LeBlanc. But made good contact. Great shot by Allie Wagner. Again, the task for anyone who's outside the box when those balls are cleared, get it back on the face. Get it on target, especially a wet day like this. LeBlanc does a great job of holding it. The ball was wet. Margraf. Pellet. Lily, who is floated out to the right now, plays a nice looking ball in there. Amy Walsh to Timko. Sinclair. Let's not forget, Canada's got a few weapons on their bench. In Charmaine Hooper and Christine Latham. Offside flag up. 
Our next U.S. Soccer telecast takes us to the Great Northwest Portland, Oregon, as the women take on the Ukraine. Coverage kicks off Sunday, July 10th at 6.30 Eastern right here on ESPN2. ESPN and ABC, official broadcast partners of the 2006 World Cup in Major League Soccer, and that is a young lady you should expect to see in that game, playing uh, back at her collegiate home, the University of Portland. It's nice to see that face back on the U.S. national team. It's great to see her. She looks so happy. And warm-ups before the game going around, high-fiving everybody. And apparently has had a great week of training for Greg Ryan. Canada now trying to bring in their left back here. This is Caroline, the 18-year-old. Drives it in. Decent looking ball, but nobody at the near post. And cleared by Wagner. A good series for Canada where they get their outside back. Caroline forward. Again, a huge gap on the outside. That's always the challenge in this system. In the 4-3-3, who gives you your width? If you're not getting up up top or your outside backs your width. of the match brought to you by Home Depot. Canada will get a free kick so far. What do you see from the U.S.? It, it's interesting because you've got so many players out there from the United States that aren't familiar necessarily with each other yet. You know, and there's always this transition and, and you have to build. And, uh, and you're seeing the three up front getting caught together a lot and when you're playing this three you really want to stay wide you want to stretch that back line for Canada you want to commit them to the outside he Greg was, line he was the interim coach when he took the team to the Algarve Cup they go unscored upon they win the Algarve Cup he gets a head coaching job and as I mentioned to you before Julie you know how will it be a little different under Greg Ryan than April Heinrichs, even though he may be an extension of April Heinrichs. He was her, her assistant coach for one year. Uh, you know, I, Greg is an unknown. That's the exciting thing. Comes into the box. We'll get back to that in a moment. As it's not forward here. Here's Wambach. He's got a little bit of room on the right side, but Canada getting behind the ball nicely. And it's not a good ball from Abby Wambach. On the right side, Timko trying to get in, Hope Solo. With some brave goalkeeping there, diving at the feet of Timko. Timko gives us another dangerous look. She was the golden boot. Award winner in the 2004 Under-19 Women's World Championship. Dangerous up top for Canada, originally a midfielder. Great hold by Hope, Hope Solo in this wet weather. Lily trying to slip in Abi Wambach. Now, with LeBlanc playing off her line, so much. Is it important for the U.S. to maybe play more diagonal balls and balls that aren't running right to her on this slick surface? Exactly, Glenn. She's going to clean up anything that comes through the middle there with too much pace. So your angles have to be a lot different, which is another reason you need to keep those forwards wider. They need to be making those runs from a wider starting position. In the 31st minute. And referee Rachel Wu says that's a throw into the U.S. And you can already see the contrast in styles. Canada's not going to have a lot of slow buildup, a lot of passes. It's going to be a ball in over the top and boom, a shot on goal. This portion of the match presented by Gatorade. The Pelvin to O'Reilly. Back to the Pelvin. Uh, can the U.S. get it switched here? they got some room on the left side. It's Redick. And she's going to try and go direct. Lily's going to try and get there. And Lily nearly does get there. And, the and, and here's a, a great example of Christine Lilly, a central midfielder coming from the midfield at the restraining line going against Canada. That's so difficult to mark. You want to send all your central midfielders. And I used to make that argument to April all the time. Top of the box, one buck. Can't control it. Of course, she wouldn't buy it, Glenn, but I try and convince her all central midfielders should go forward at all times. And then, of course, not have to come back. But it's so dangerous, you can't track that run. Will we see more freedom from the midfields? Are we seeing it today? Christy Lilly will love this position in the center of midfield because she can roam. She can come from a deeper position. She puts pressure on their back line because they're not expecting it. Again, the long throw from Reddick, which is becoming a weapon here. Maybe a chance to get turned. Welsh, shot blocked. O'Reilly hit it. And the U.S. will get a corner. So many targets to look for for the United States. You'd think we were Canada with all the tall players we have this time around. Third corner kick for the United States. 
Wagner set to take it. And again, it's in towards LeBanc, who fists it out. And then cleared. Halftime's going to be interesting. Coming up at halftime, we look out to L.A., and Abby Wambach is moving in. We'll get a tour of her new place, learn about being the youngest of seven, and how she almost never made it back to the U.S. national team roster. Plus, Julie and I, we break down and analyze the first half here in Virginia Beach. That's all coming up at halftime. That ought to be interesting. New digs for Abby Wambach. She's loving it. <laughs> Fits her perfectly, right on the beach. Very laid back. Good look at Karina LeBlanc there. Christy Welsh standing in front of the goalkeeper there. Lily gets it over. Wambach again was the target. At last, block. To the box it comes one time down. And it just doesn't look like Canada gets in front of the ball quickly enough here to maybe catch the U.S. with players extended forward. And broken up nicely by Kalupu who came all the way across the field. She's on the right side for the corner kick, exactly what she's supposed to do, stay there, give pressure to the ball, stop the counter. Velvet. I mean, Greg Ryan had mentioned to us last night how the attention of Abby Wambach now is creating space for others, including Christy Welsh at the Algarve Cup where she was a leading scorer with five. And Mia Hamm used to draw all that attention. So Abby used to be able to reap that reward. Now she's the one drawing all the attention. Christy Welsh gets to reap that reward. Tim Coe tried to play it inside here, Shannon Box. Any team that can bring two through weapons to their front line is just so dangerous. You can't stop any one of them. Here's one of them, Christine Lilly. Orlickson will go direct to Tim Coe and Mark Rapp was there but couldn't control it. But will win it on a great tackle there. Rombach couldn't play it because she was in an offside position. Six substitutes allowed for each team today. So we should see a number of different players in the second half. But make no mistake, Red Ryan said we're coming here to win this game. O'Reilly. Wambach. Wagner in the middle. She goes to Wagner. One buck. Chance here to make it two. Puts it back. Empty net. Christine Welsh. Slots home the rebound. 2-0 U.S. in the 35th minute. What a wonderful build-up by the United States. Starting with a ball into Heather O'Reilly, who faces up. Takes a look. Penetrates on the dribble. Finds Ali Wagner on the seam, who has a lot of time. Like any good forward having six cents to follow that shot. Welsh getting her 19th goal for the United States in her 28th appearance. And as I mentioned before, was the leading scorer for the U.S. at the Algarve Cup back in March with five goals, winning the Golden Boot. Hope solo now. So a good first half for the U.S. You saw that Canada had sent its midfield forward. There was a gap there for Ali on the counter. Stays in her seam well. That's the brilliance of Ali Wagner. She loves that little seam. She's slipping those little balls through. Great pace and texture on the ball. Here is Wagner. He's heading it to the pelvic. He knocks it forward. Not a good clear there. Here's Wambach, but LeBlanc is there. Marina LeBlanc played at Nebraska as a number of Canadian national team members did. Here's Wagner. And Reddick laces a beautiful ball to Kolopny. A thing of beauty that. To the feet of Lilly. Margraf. Extended possession for the United States here in the 37th minute. Holding a 2-0 lead. You're starting to see the United States get more comfortable on the ball, Glenn. Finding the seams. More patience. They started off the game early, knocking a lot over the top, trying to stretch the Canadian defense. 
which creates a little more space in the midfield to play. And now you're finding, seeing them find feet. Christy Welsh in the 35th minute from Abi Wambach. And again, the U.S. leading scorer in 2005. She adds to her tally of five at the Algarve Cup now with six. And what an incredible breakthrough few months for Christy Welsh. She played in residency with the United States team last year in preparation for the Olympics. Didn't make the squad. Was so disheartened. Again, this direct ball will go all the way back to the block. It is a great story. And, and, I mean, this is another one of the stories or potential stories that really can emerge here over the next two years, would you say? I mean, when does Greg Ryan really have to firm up his team for 2007? How many months out? No, he's got plenty of time. I mean, obviously you want to get your core group together playing and get them understanding each other. But this is the time to look. And, and, and Christy Wells, she came in to 2004 residency camp. She was fitter than I've ever seen her. I said, how did you do it? She goes, I ran on the treadmill. I had to keep up on the treadmill. <laughs> That's the trick. It's interesting. Yeah, and a, some big size and power as well. And skill with Wambach up front. There's a number of players missing today. Another very important player, Lindsay Tarpley, not here at her brother's wedding. More pressure from the U.S. to bring in Box. And look at Margraf step up to not allow Canada to turn. Walsh played that into the middle. The Pelbet is going to get there. This portion of the match presented by Phillips. And the U.S. holding a 2-0 lead. Goals from Kalupni and Welsh. And you're seeing a good job of the United States outside back starting to step into that gap, starting to playmate from a higher position. The, the key now for them is not just to get into that gap, to actually penetrate and make that Canadian back line shift. It's not good enough just to get in there and serve. You've got to actually displace that back line. Here is Reddick to Lilly. And Lilly draws three or four and finds the feet of Wambach. Good looking ball here to Box, who's joining in now. Hermes drives that one long, and the header won by the pelvic. Lily. Headed away by Chapman. Canada has struggled to gain possession in this one. Abi Wambach now. He's got O'Reilly. Back to Wambach. Well, she's at the far post. Wagner lets it go nicely to Lily. And U.S. gaining confidence through passing here. Wagner, good looking ball. And they tried to bring Kalupni in. Take a look at the U.S. bench. Six subs available today. And a number of options for Greg Ryan, including Heather Mitz. Buckenville is the backup goalkeeper. And Tiffany Milgren, the topless. Anybody you expect to come on in the second half, Julie? Greg Ryan has talked about loving Danielle Fotopoulos' size. Again, another tower. So. Abby Wambach had a bit of a groin strain early on in the week. He said if she can't go much, you know, 90 minutes, I'd like to see a Danielle Fotopoulos or maybe if I need speed, a Tiffany Milbert up top. Speaking of speed, O'Reilly. Welsh, Wagner, Wagner, great little turn, can't get the shot off. Might have been brought down to the penalty spot we go. At the moment of truth was fouled and the U.S. will get a penalty here in the 44th, 41st minute. And this is, is Allie Wagner at her best, faking the shot, cutting it back in. Player looks like she got the ball. And also Allie's leg at the same time. But making things happen in the box, that's key. Abby Wambach stepping up to the penalty spot to make it 3-0 for the United States. Against LeBlanc. Put it off the outside of the post. I feel that post rattle from up here. And put a circle around that one because that one psychologically might have buried Canada here in the 42nd minute. And we're going to take a look from the Phillips goal cam. Abby Wombach, very comfortable in this position. Very comfortable in front of the goal. Loves to take penalty kicks. 
Hits it well. Just off the outside of the post, that looked courtesy of Phillips. And what a look it was. Unfortunately for the U.S., it doesn't go in. Here's Shannon Box now. Good work from Box. Lilly. And just cut out at the moment of truth by Chapman. U.S. still in possession. Wagner shot a blast. And a save from the block. And the U.S. not only scoring goals, but getting more entertaining as the half goes on here in Virginia Beach. And you can see them smiling and enjoying it. They're getting their rhythm. They're playing. They're knocking. They're moving. They're not ecstatic. Again, though, that possession, that counterattack started by a Shannon Box tackle in the middle. It, it just, she brings so much. Lily off the corner. In the back post, LeBanc got a fist to it. The U.S. gets another corner. Six for the match. And like you said, Glenn, Abby Wambach puts that away. Canada goes into the halftime, 3-0 down. That, that's a tough halftime talk right there for Evan Pellerud. Yeah, rain beginning to really drive here. Whipped in cross. Good looking one. And off the side netting. Welsh was there, and LeBlanc is down. Karina LeBlanc of the Canadian national team down as Christy Welsh was cruising into that near post. Great driven ball into the near post. So difficult to get a hand on. Karina LeBlanc driving to the near post. Great save. Great job in that crowd to get a hand on it. The U.S. have a shot advantage of 9-1. to one, uh, Just emphasizing their dominance here. Golupny stepping up. Scored the game's first goal. Only the second of her national team career. Here's Box. And what a vital link she is. Lily now. Margra. And the direct ball goes all the way back to LeBlanc. First game in the booth here, watching your old team. <laughs> any, uh, any little vibes in your heart you wish you were out there right now? No, I, I feel good. I, uh, shoot, they're, they're ready to get rid of me, Glenn. 17 years, when is she going to get out of here? Uh, it's, it's nice to know you. the team is in such good hands. It's been defined by the spirit of players like Julie Fowdy, Mia Hamm, Brandon Chastain, Joy Fawcett. And the U.S. will get a throw. Two minutes of stoppage time have been added. Put down by O'Reilly. Welsh, can she turn it back? Good looking ball from Welsh. Uh, top of the box was Wambach, and didn't make the best of that one as LeBlanc will collect for Canada. Really beginning to drive here in Virginia Beach. This system just basically sitting over this complex and the local area. It's so difficult for Canada to get anything started because they have three United States forwards sitting on their back line, pressuring the ball. They're not able to serve the long ball like they like. That's such a great benefit of that 4-3-3 system if played right. And ideally, the United States forwards are forcing inside because you have those three pinched in midfielders so that you don't have your midfield spread from touchline to touchline. So again, does that go back to the point that if Canada is to get back into this game, they've got to use the whip like this? This is Walsh, and a big tackle there. And at the moment of truth, a timely one by LaPelvic. Thorlickson. Walsh. And 63 caps and try to get it over. And nobody there. Mark Raff is going to stick it towards the halfway line. It is really pouring and driving rain right now that these two teams are competing in. Here's Wambach. And she's fouled. Randy Hermes with the foul on Abby Wambach. Abby Wambach is always drawing a lot of attention. Two players on her here. 
Aggressive tackle. This from the penalty spot, it would have been her 48th goal. She has 47 for the U.S. And with these conditions, this game, despite the 2-0 lead in the U.S. dominance, far from over here in Virginia Beach. We might add, Abby has 47 goals on 59 games. And that'll do it. Referee Rachel Wu has called the end of the first half. Christy Welsh had a goal in the 35th minute. Prior to that was Lori Kalepni. And the U.S. have a 2-0 lead. Abby Wambach will visit with her coming up. Her new digs out in Hermosa Beach. The U.S. have a 2-0 lead after this first half over Canada. When we come back, more on a visit with Abby Wambach here on ESPN2. The smooth taste that gets things started. The refreshing taste that keeps things going. Where will you find the great taste of Bud Light? Wherever good friends get together. And wherever good times are going on and on. Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. Our new fan is cool. And what we paid for it is even cooler. Right now at the Home Depot, you can seize the summer. Get 20 to 30% off select ceiling fans and lighting, including the best-selling brand, Hampton Bay, and designs from Hunter you won't find anywhere else. It's just one more way we're driving down prices. And at up to 30% off, giving you more options. At the Home Depot, you can do it. We can help. Soccer fans, the U.S. women's national team is coming to Los Angeles. The USA takes on Iceland Sunday, July 24th, 2 p.m. at the Home Depot Center. Call Ticketmaster at 213-480-3232 or visit ussoccer.com. You take care of your body, so can your toothbrush. There is more and more evidence that oral health impacts overall health, so it makes sense to use the Sonic brush, used and recommended by more dental professionals. Sonicare, because your mouth is the gateway to your body. Some guys seem to attract a crowd wherever they go. Maybe it's the clothes they wear. <laughs> Solid silk tie sets, $9.99. Josh shirt, three for 20. Dickie shirt. Or cell phone short. Just $16.99. Get them short, $9.99. Boys knit, $6.99. Newsmart, the original men's superstar. Four locations open every day. What are you guys doing? Uh, homework. Okay. Upload it. Oh. Call 1-800-ROADRUNNER and get your first six months for only $29.95 per month. More speed, more fun. One place. Roadrunner High Speed Online. Welcome back to a very rainy Virginia Beach, Virginia, but uh, the goals have been raining for the U.S. in the first half. Kalupni and Welsh, the goal scorers in this one. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Glenn Davis. Now, one of the most definitive strikers in the world, Abby Wambach, missed from the penalty spot in the first half, but this is a woman now that's defining the center forward position. She's also defining her new home out in California. You know, from the time that I actually got on the, the Washington Freedom in the WSA, um, April had called me into camp, and I was on and off rosters, and, you know, it was a really emotionally taxing time for me. You know, there was a defining moment where April said, if you don't start scoring goals, if you don't start playing the way we know you can play, then you're probably not going to make the World Cup roster. I knew that I wanted nothing more than to be on the women's national team. 03 World Cup was my goal. And 
you know, I did all the little things that I needed to do to, to, to make that squad. And it didn't really hurt that Mia Hamm was on my team. I can't thank her enough, and I will never stop um, mentioning her and how much her impact was on my life. Mia wasn't the only source of support and guidance in her life. Her family has been with her every step of the way. My family has been my support system throughout my life. Um, for one reason or another, whether it be beating me up in the backyard or beating me on the basketball court or, you know, tossing me baseballs to hit. Ever since I was young, um, they've always been there for me. When I go back to Rochester, there's always some sort of buzz, you know, I'm in the newspaper for coming home or whatever. Um, and I really try to keep it, you know, on the down low when I'm there. I know I am somewhat of a, a star there. I've been really wanting to buy a home and make a place and establish myself somewhere. And my whole family has done that in Rochester. For right now, you know, L.A. is definitely a place where I need to grow and uh, find out a little bit more on who I am as a person. With key veterans retired, are the pressures weighing on Abby Wambach? I wouldn't say pressure, I would say responsibility. Um, the way that Mia, Julie, and Joy have, have left, I mean, they left on top, and they left knowing and feeling comfortable with the, the state that the team was in. There is a transition period of this team, a new coach, new players, but these players, everybody on this team knows how to, to be successful. We just have to go out there, work hard, have the mentality that we've always had, and uh, go out there and win games. And new players are, are going to get recognition like Abby Wambach. I mean, a great, great player, and now she's going to be able to step up and, and be the person that everybody, every girl's going to be screaming her name. Abby Wambach certainly has drawn attention here today in Virginia Beach as she has taken the pressure off strikers like Christy Welsh and O'Reilly. When we come back, U.S. have the lead. from the first taste. Refreshing every single time. The great taste of Bud Light. The summer is calling, and so are the friends. Bud Light, great taste for your great times. Sport is sport. A foul's a foul, and a bat's a bat, even if it's flat. Ten feet on the west side is ten feet on the east side. Football is football, unless it's football. Now, a win's a win, a loss is a loss. But no matter what, you better come with it, because it's 90 feet to first, no matter where home is. I've got a to-do list that's a mile long and an entire weekend to trim it down. Don't put off the project. Put off the payments. Right now at the Home Depot, get no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases store-wide of $2.99 or more when you use your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. Plus, get free assembly with the purchase of select gas grills so you can get cooking quicker. But hurry, these offers end soon. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. your body. So can your toothbrush. 
there is more and more evidence that oral health impacts overall health. So it makes sense to use the Sonic Brush, used and recommended by more dental professionals. Sonicare, because your mouth is the gateway to your body. Soccer fans, the U.S. women's national team is coming to Los Angeles. The USA takes on Iceland Sunday, July 24th, 2 p.m. at the Home Depot Center. Call Ticketmaster at 213-480-3232 or visit ussoccer.com. Welcome back to Virginia Beach, Virginia. The U.S. holding a 2-0 lead over Canada, their first domestic match of the season of 2005. Welcome, everybody. Glenn Davis along with Julie Foudy. And, Julie, uh, first kind of litmus test for this team under Greg Ryan in front of the public. What are your thoughts so far? I thought they looked very good, very good. At first, you know, a little nervous trying to get their footing in the wet grass, and then all of a sudden you see the rhythm. You see Allie getting the ball a lot. You see Christine going at that back line. So... Overall, a very good first half for the United States. And certainly it started out in a good way. Lori Kolopny getting her second international goal in the 12th minute. And Lori Kolopny hitting a nice left-footed half volley right in the corner. And then you're going to see Canada trying to do a counter. Kat Reddick there to stop the counter. Great early ball into Heather O'Reilly who finds Ali Wagner in the seam. Christy Welsh on the left side spinning out. She also has Abby Wombach. Abby doing a great job keeping that ball low. And then Christy finishing off her run to knock in the second goal for the United States. And again, Ali Wagner showing her magic in the box, taking people on, which always creates penalty kicks, which the United States likes. And off the Phillips goal cam, Abby Wambach saying bad post. Now, you had four points you brought up before this game that you wanted us to focus on. Let's take a look at those and revisit them. We had the attacking central midfielder position as a key position for both teams. Because if you can play this system right with a 4-3-3, you can have like five forwards attacking with your attack attacking central midfielders. The USA had seven times where their attacking midfielders were getting in behind Canada's defense to Canada zero. And then, of course, Amy LaPelbit and Laura Kolopny, the two new outside backs for the United States, doing a great job getting forward, creating chances. And the battle of formations and styles. You had Canada trying to establish this direct long ball game, United States doing a good job keeping the ball on the ground. And then the question, of course, Glenn, is will we see Tiffany Milbert in the second half? Second half action coming up. Fans have been brave here out today. So have the U.S. national team players. 2-0 lead over Canada. Maybe an opportunity in the second half to see Tiffany Milbert. Second half action coming up. U.S. and Canada on ESPN2. The smooth taste that gets things started. The refreshing taste that keeps things going. Where will you find the great taste of Bud Light? I got a that you choose my style. Wherever good friends get together. And wherever good times are going on and on. Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. If you're going to play out here, you not only have to be tough on the outside, you're going to have to be tough on the inside. Our new fan is cool, and what we paid for it is even cooler. Right now at the Home Depot, you can seize the summer. Get 20 to 30% off select ceiling fans and lighting including the best-selling brand, Hampton Bay, and designs from Hunter you won't find anywhere else. It's just one more way we're driving down prices and at up to 30% off, giving you more options. At the Home Depot, you can do it. We can help. This is London. Wimbledon is on ESPN2, the Grand Slam Network. 14 days of complete coverage on the world's center court. This is London. This is Wimbledon. Wimbledon with 
2005 Championships presented by Genworth Financial. Coverage continues through July 3rd on ESPN2, the Grand Slam. Life after ITT Tech turned out to be just what I had hoped growing up would be like. The best thing that's ever happened to me is getting a job that I really enjoy doing. My instructors at ITT Tech helped keep me motivated. My parents are very proud of my achievements, and all I can say is I'm happy. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-ITT-TECH or visit us on the web. When you become an auto insurance discounters customer, your premium will be reduced, but your service won't be. In the event that you're involved in an accident, our claims experts are standing by 24 hours a day. The carriers we represent have top quality ratings and settle many claims within 48 hours of your initial call. Plus, if auto insurance discounters can't lower your premium, we'll pay you $500 in cash. Restrictions apply. Call 713-789-AUTO. Virginia Beach Sportsplex in Virginia Beach, Virginia. The U.S. has a 2-0 lead over Canada in the white jerseys against Canada in the red as we get set for second half action here. And it is game on here at the Virginia Beach Sportsplex. Corey Columbia on the ball right here is only really proven pivotal in this one. The game's first goal loses possession. One sub for Canada. And one that we need to keep an eye on. Christine Latham, who played at Nebraska, just tried to chest that down. He's on now for Brittany Timko. So this is a player, Julia, that can really maybe change the momentum of a game. Christine Latham, who used to play for the San Diego Spirit. Glenn, my t former teammate. And what does she bring to Canada? She is an Abby Wombach type player. When I say that, I mean she's very physical. She loves to run through people. Great around the goal. Very opportunistic. Will definitely give Canada a needed spark. They haven't gotten anything going up top. Christine Sinclair's been very quiet. Timco's been very quiet. Here's Wambach. Welsh. Christy Welsh tries to get it over, but right to LeBlanc. You can see with Canada having such a hard time even getting numbers forward with that statistic that's so telling. They had zero midfield attacks. No midfielders getting in behind U.S.'s back line. The Pelbit now. U.S. will build it here in the second half. Again, this is their first domestic game of 2005. Sort of the unveiling of the new look United States national team. Minus legendary players like Mia Hamm, Joy Fawcett, my partner Julie Foudy, Brandy Chastain. Welsh couldn't control it, and neither could Latham. Margraf to box now. Kolopny, and Welsh can't control it. Lily tried to bring in Wambach, and boy, how quickly she tried to pick out Wambach. This will go all the way back to Hope Solo. And now the challenge for the United States, they finished that first half with a great rhythm. They were finding feet, they were threading the ball, finding seams, and Canada's going to try and bring it back to that direct style. So the United States has to keep the ball on the ground, have patience, knock the ball, quick switches, take advantage of those gaps, get their outside backs forward. And it seemed like a first half, as you look at Ali Wagner, it seemed like a first half where the momentum just built it up to the final whistle. The U.S. just seemed to get better and better as the half went on. And it, and it gets so tiring as a team if you're chasing the ball, which is what Canada was doing. It, you know, if you can hold the ball, make them chase. China is brilliant at that. They hold the ball. They're so technical. You get so frustrated and deflated chasing the entire game. Direct ball from Mark Ruff. Wagner. Canada has really had a difficult time really stringing any significant amount of passes together. Here's Latham, not a good touch from her. Reddick for the 
Murphy of Lilly, and so Feather is she on the ball. Kristen Lilly is so consistent in her 18 years with the national team. I've often said if we could only clone her, because every day she brings the same consistency, and that's such a challenge at this level. Could have been a few who wanted to clone you, too. We'd like to thank Bud Light and all of our U.S. soccer sponsors for allowing us to bring you this game without interruption. And the, big, the great thing about Christine Lilly is she just works and works and works. She's so smart and she's always going to give you this incredible work ethic as well. And here is Christine Lilly. Connecting on her pass with Wambach, gets it back and tried to sl slip in O'Reilly. Lilly again. Wagner. Cleared by Canada here in the 50th minute. And you can see the United States finding Ali Wagner in that seam, finding Christine Lilly a lot, using their attacking center midfielders. Canada not able to get their attacking center midfielders or even their front line involved in the game yet. Lombok, Lilly, and clever little move there. And this time won't get around Sophie Schmidt. Well, remember, we. We hooked up Christine Lilly with a GPS unit to track her mileage, so she's going 3.7 miles. Surprising to you? <laughs> this is a 33-year-old, 296 capper. She's running like an 18-year-old out there. She was very active, very mobile, and seemed to have a free reign. That'd be a little incentive for her to keep running that second half, huh? Well, I, Usually she'd be like, Coach, I'm not going back on the fence. Now she's like, oh, I got the GPS thing on me. I got to put it on. Give everybody a GPS except for the world people, obviously. Fox. Lily, the captain. Wambach, and he's not going to get the foul there. And I'd be remiss, Glenn, if I didn't put a shout out for the midfield because we're, we're the workhorses on the team. We're the one to do all the work for everyone else. So it's good to see. We, we obviously intended to put a midfielder with that GPS system, and you can see the miles. Much different than a, a back or a forward. That would be the next thing we track. Canada desperately trying to do something positive here to give them the feel that they can create something against the U.S. today. Wambach uh, has had her problems a little bit with the control here. Uh, the conditions certainly are a challenge. Coming up next, see all the best runners, throwers, and jumpers compete in the 2005 USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships. It all takes place at the Home Depot Center on the campus of Cal State Dominguez Hills in Carson, California. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And of course, we know the Home Depot Center is also the home of Major League Soccer's LA Galaxy and Chivas USA. I think we should throw the US team in that. We used yeah, to joke absolutely. around with Coach Heinrich last year. We were running so much, we'd say, USA track on three. <laughs> Just want to go all the way back to Hope Solo, who really has been untested today. Talk a little bit about the goalkeeping situation, Julie, with Brianna Scurry electing to take this year off of her. you got a lot of veterans who, Christine, Christy Rampone, who's pregnant, having her first child in October. LeBlanc at the feet of O'Reilly. This portion of the match is presented by Gatorade. you got Brianna Scurry, who you mentioned, who took a real job. She's scary in itself, right? She's working at a bank. It's great for her. I'm not sure if she's going to come back. So you have a lot of players who are taking a little bit of time off. The goalkeeper position is wide open. Weather and rain just continuing to pound down here in Virginia Beach. Here's Kolopny. I guess a game designed to give the coaches an opportunity to see a lot of players. Are you surprised there has not been more substitutions? No, I'm sure he'll get that in the second half. Back was trying to play in O'Reilly. We're talking about goalkeepers. You also have Nicole Barnhart, who was here this year. Great young keeper from Stanford, just graduated from Stanford. You have Jim Branham, who was with the team last year. It'll be a, a position Greg Ryan has said he will keep open and look a lot at. Of course, the backup today is Kristen Luckenbill, who has 14 caps for the U.S. So a lot of young goalkeepers in the mix as well. Big tackle there by Christine Lilly, who is doing it both ways out of midfield for the U.S. The interesting, you know, Christine's been playing up top a lot this year. At the Algarve Cup, she played forward. We don't have Lindsay Tarpley here today. She's 
She's in a great presence in our attacking central midfield spot. She's at her brother Chad's wedding. But the versatility you have between those two positions, and Christine Lilly gives you that. Up by the pelvic. Canada now maybe trying to threaten, but Scott Reddick with a very firm, confident tackle there to Wagner. Chapman couldn't control it, but it takes a favorable bounce. Matheson trying to work it forward here for Canada. And Canada will get a throw. And you see Canada's change its defensive pressure a little bit. In the first half, they were playing a very low-pressure style type of defense, dropping back to the mid-stripe. They're starting to press and put a little pressure on our back four this half. Latham still trying to get herself into this game. Has 40 caps for Canada, 15 goals. As you look at Lori Kalupnia, only 21 years of age, picking up her second international goal of her career here today. And she really has emerged as one of the early big stories. I really like Lori Clubby. She's got a great sense of the game. She reads the game. She feels it. She's good on the ball. She likes to take on. It's a dimension we need from that outside back position. Lily knocking that forward. Woods O'Reilly. U.S. will get the throw. Wagner to take it. Training this week at the University of Virginia under Greg Ryan. Incredibly intense was the word that was describing the U.S. training sessions. He talked about only having six days. Canada coming off a seven-game tour, getting all these great games in, in Europe. Chapman to Latham now. Maybe a chance for Canada. Latham against Margraf. It's a good-looking ball into the box and good cover there from Rapelli, who came in from a right-back position. Well, the first time we've seen... Christine Latham get a little space on the right side. And immediately giving a spark to Canada. To the box it comes again. The final ball not there but go all the way to Hope Solo. Christine Latham's one of those players who's going to run down every ball. She's going to be tracking defensively. She's going to be tackling. She's just going to create things with her busyness and her physicality. So already getting in behind the United States defense. 2003 WUSA Rookie of the Year. It's Christine Latham, who played with you, as you mentioned before, with the San Diego Spirit. Got it on the attack here. Maybe a chance here. Opportunity. Shot to the far post. Goes through everybody. Matheson had a great chance. And the best chance of the match for Canada there. And Matheson coming out of that central midfield position, which we've talked about all game, which has been critical. Canada hasn't got any numbers forward. First time here, Matheson getting forward. Sinclair doing a great job going at the back line of the United States, attacking them, has to draw in Kate Markgraf, has to draw in Kat Reddick. And then Matheson almost getting a shot on goal. But it's that run by Christine Sinclair that draws in those two on the back line. Maybe it motivates the U.S. Lily trying to knock it forward. That's the chance of the match coming to Diana Matheson, who plays at Princeton, the 21-year-old. O'Reilly, good ball. Lily has got acres of space here on the left side. Christine Lilly towards the back post. Bombuck is pulled out, and it's headed away by Lang. This portion of the match is presented by Home Depot. And Canada may be deriving a little confidence through Christine Latham now. Sinclair and broken up by Reddick. Rain driving down here in Virginia Beach. What a flick there by Latham, who tried to bring in Sinclair. A little bit of creativity there. We're seeing Canada get a little more success at the outside back position. Caroline on the left side for Canada, serving some balls in, and she's stepping into a more offensive position, which is then causing Ali Wagner to have to shift out and try a marker. 
Good luck. Just looks so confident on the ball, Lori Kalupny. Right to bring in Wambach with really Matheson. And, and that's really where I think the United States' next level is, is those, that back line, having the confidence to play make out of the back. Jack here coming from Canada now. It's Latham into the box. One more pass here, chance. And it looked as though Sinclair was maybe trying to chip Hope Solo. But again, I think Canada now is stepping it up a little bit, Julie. I think you're being generous on that one, Glenn. <laughs> was, I, was I being nice? Well, don't forget, Radio Shack presents MLS Soccer Saturday. It continues July 9th. The Kansas City Wizards, Josh Wolf, Kerry Zavagnin, go head-to-head -head with Jaime Moreno, Freddie Adu, and DC United. That one live at 6 p.m. Eastern. A special time for more information, log on to ESPNSoccerNet.com. ESPN and ABC official broadcast partners of the 2006 World Cup and Major League Soccer. And the Wizards getting a 3-0 victory last night over Chivas USA. Wagner. All right, now why was I being so generous about? <laughs> Christine Sinclair, Chippy the keeper. I think she just got a, a weird bounce and hit off the foot. Yeah. Nice stand for her. But it is Canada that is risking a little bit more and pushing things a little bit here. And how does the U.S. counter that? And, and what you know, right when I talk about USA's backs needing to play make more, Cat Reddick gets stripped while playmaking. <laughs> but that's the presence of Christy Latham. So Abby Wambach is going to come out. Danielle Fotopoulos will come on, and Danielle Fotopoulos has not really been around the U.S. national team in the last couple of years. Interesting sub. Give me a little bit uh, on goal. First, Wamba. Danielle Fotopoulos coming in for Abby Wamba, and, and, and Fotop, as we call her. Danielle Fotopoulos just coming off having her second kid. Lexi, four-year-old, Asilos, 11-month-old, and looking just great. Hasn't been with the team for a few years, was on the 1999 World Cup team. Get it again, Matheson. Great presence and size, of course, with Danielle Fotopoulos. And, and then the hometown kid, Angela Hukley. And she's wearing your wearing, old number 11. Is that a little sentimental? I think I'm going to bust that. <laughs> and she said, Jules, is it okay when you retire if I wear your number? I said, I would be honored. Her parents were at the hotel as well, and she brings some attacking capabilities as well. But it's Canada now, and that one off the mark from Thorlickson. Let's go back to Abby Wambach. What was her performance like today? What did you see from her? I think, I think Abby obviously is dangerous at all times. She is part of the, the goal with Christy Wells. She's, she's deflecting. The Corina Blanc is deflecting a shot off Abby Wambach that Christy Wells scores. She's getting in. She just didn't seem to have her footing today. She spent more time on the ground actually than standing. And that's, and that's what she's talked about a lot is I want to stay on my feet. I want a better balance. I want to stay on top. And in, a, in a wet game like this, it just didn't seem like she was able to get her footing today. Latham headed it forward, and Margraff is going to gently coax this one all the way back to Hope Solo. 62nd minute, the U.S. have a 2-0 lead over Canada. Don't forget, Abi Wambach missed from the set the penalty spot in the latter stages of the first half. So this, uh, against a dangerous Canada team who is emerging, is still a game here. Kalupny is going to shield that out wisely. And it'll be interesting to see if, if the United States is going to change its system. With bringing Danielle Fotopoulos in, you're seeing that they may be going with a 4-4-2. Whether Christine Lilly goes up top, which doesn't seem like she is, I would have thought she would have gone up top to continue the 4-3-3, but it looks like she's hanging in the midfield, so they may be changing systems here. Come on, come on up, come on up. It looks as though Tiffany Milbrit as well is getting set to come in for the United States. So Greg Ryan now starting to go to his bench. And Angela Hughley is a very skillful, technical player, very much like Allie Wagner. We, used to put, we call her Ice because she's just so calm on the ball. Gives you such a great playmaking presence. Oh, what an opportunity and moment this is for her. Having grown up in Virginia Beach, and the crowd now going wild for Tiffany Milbert, who comes on in place of Christy Welch. 
And this is so great to see Tiffany Milver back on the field. I mean, she, she walked away from the game with 199 international appearances and 99 goals. And she said to me, Jules, it wasn't about getting to 200. It wasn't about scoring my 100. It was about enjoying the game again. And I am so happy. I was playing in Sweden. I was loving it there. I felt like the old me again. And I needed that year and a half off. And I was cheering you on at the Olympic gold medal game. I wanted you guys to do so well. But I'm back. You know, I feel great. And it's so nice to see her smiling again. In great spirits, she earns her 200th appearance today. And she's sitting on, right now, 99 goals. Fotopoulos, <laughs> fresh into the game right now, into the box. Uh, Canada also made a set. Isabel Morno, a 29-year-old with 74 caps, comes on for Amanda Cicchini. So, second of six substitutions. Morno, a veteran with the Canadian team, plays on the outside. Evan Pellerud hopefully trying to get a little more spark out of his outside backs, get some numbers forward. Canada's thinking, we just got Abby Wallbuck out, and now we got Danielle Fatopoulos. I got another six-footer coming in. Fox coming back. This portion of the match is presented by Phillips. As Margraf knocking this one forward. Duplice heads it to Wagner, who switches it nicely. Lily. Beats one, is not going to earn a free kick. Rachel Wu not buying it. Goes back to Margroff again. Here's Lily one on one again. And again, you see the slick conditions as it has rained considerably here. Lily, what a play to keep it alive. Gets it over. Dukles was there, but couldn't control it. Oh, what a. What a day it would have been if Euclid could have brought that down and scored here in front of her friends and family. The Hard. former star of University of Virginia. And it's just a really difficult ball to bring down on this wet surface. But we've, we've seen the United States, the United States now move to a different system. They've gone with a 4-4-2 now, so we're going to see a lot more width out of the midfielders. Christine Lilly showing it there. Canada now into the box. They come. And fighting through is Sinclair, solo down at the feet of Sinclair. And has been good off the line. Let's go now to Abby Wambach down on the U.S. national team bench. Abby, thanks for joining us. Good. Thanks for having me. Abby, tell us a little bit about uh, how difficult the conditions are out here today. Uh, it's just really wet, so it's hard to get any decent touches on the ball. Um, it's kind of a free-for-all. We're just trying to get the ball on the ground and, you know, pick up any chances that are in the box. Abby, how's it feel playing with uh, some new faces out there? You guys look good. You got your rhythm. Yeah, you know, it's been fun. You know, it's always great playing against Canada because they always play a pretty tough game and we like to play physical as well. So whenever we get a chance to come in and play together and uh, these young kids have really stepped up for us, you know, Amy LaPel bit in the back line. Uh, Ange obviously just stepped on and Lil, you know, she's not too young, but she acts like it. <laughs> Abby, uh, you know, despite the fact that you're still a fresh face on this team, uh, do you feel now the opportunity or the importance of leading this team now more with the retirement of players like Julie and Mia Hamm? Uh, I don't I don't think it's pressure. I just think it's the responsibility of everybody on this team. And some have a little bit more than others, but, you know, people come in on, off the bench, Millie just did, and, and they're expected to, to have the same responsibility. And it's the mentality and the tradition of this team that once you step on this field, you got to leave it. Abby, thank you very much for joining us. Continued success in the future. Way to go, Abigail. How's it going, Jules? Oh, fabulous. You should see me in my suit. I'm all stripped out. I showered. I hear you're doing well. Oh, thanks. They're lying to you. Charmaine Hooper now comes on for Canada. And this is when things get interesting, Glenn. Charmaine Hooper, the legend of Canadian women's soccer. 121 caps, 63 goals. Recently birthed another child. So uh, Charmaine Hooper in the lineup and a player that we all know from the WSA days of the Atlanta beat, a very dangerous player. This is like a promo, promo for moms can do it all. <laughs> Charmaine Hooper, four and a half year old baby girl, Danielle Fotopoulos. Wagner, Fotopoulos, Euclid. 
beautifully. Great move to try and turn the corner. And Canada under pressure. Morneau clears. And, and it's always a question of where Canada is going to put Charmaine Hooper. She is, of course, a natural forward. She's been playing her in the back a lot. Later in her career, she's 37 years old. She moved to the center back position. Was dominant for Canada there. On another day, do you think that's where she's eventually going to finish out her career as a defender? She's not playing 90 minutes right now, but I think if she were to go 90 minutes, she would probably spend most of that in the back. And what they were doing in the 2003 World Cup is they were then throwing her up top for the last 20, like you're seeing here. So it's going to be interesting with Vern Latham. Latham, this will be a test for the last line of the U.S. defense as the Canadians continue to pump it forward. Hooper got up and nudged it forward and semi-cleared by Margrave. We are now in the 69th minute. U.S. holding a 2-0 lead. Latham is in there, and so is Hope Sola. Great goalkeeping from Hope Sola off her line today. And that's a tough one to hold. If you're going to come out as far as Hope Sola did on that one, you got to hold on to that thing. Like Christine, Christine Latham, like an Abby Wambach, is just fearless in the air. She's going to go for every ball. Lily. Fox. Red there by Caroline. Milbert. Wagner. Milbert trying to turn the corner. And testing Lang, who has to clear. Tiffany Milbert now adding a little energy to the U.S. attack. It's great to see Tiffany Milbert out there. We talked about her as being the one to watch when she comes in. Where is she at? She's been playing in Sweden like I talked about, but no one's really seen her in a year and a half, so there's no question Greg Ryan will be checking out what her fitness is like, what her touches are like. Wagner. Lily. Wagner. And individually, the U.S. just so much more confident on the ball in Canada. Wagner. Look at this stuff between Wagner and Lily. Game looking fun there in the penalty area. And, and that's the patience that the United States needs to use consistently. We've always had this challenge with the team for the last 17 years. Is we want to go forward, we want to score, we want to attack, which is nice. But there's got to be this balance because it should be a, a, a situation where the United States is almost walking these goals in because they're, on paper, superior talented to the Canadian team. But sometimes we just can't find that patience. There was a great example of what patience can bring. Lang. It was Latham trying to flick it onto Hooper, but did not get a chance to redirect it. And we talked about Evan Pellerud with the Norwegian team before he came to Canada. That same style of launching it up to your forwards. But what Norway does so well, what Canada hasn't got to, is they get runners coming in behind. So you're flicking onto someone. This portion of the match is presented by Gatorade in the 72nd minute. Changes made by both teams. Charmaine Hooper, Latham on for Canada. And of course, Tiffany Milbrick, Angela Hughes have come on for the U.S. Here is Latham. Margrave, great tackle there to step up. Wagner. Milbrick's got room. She's also got 99 goals. Cuts it back. Fotopoulos, right at LeBlanc. the sense entertaining a little bit here in Virginia Beach right now. You can see that front line opening up. Big gaps. Tiffany Milbert wide open. Finding Danielle Fotopoulos in the box. Schmidt played it back into the box it goes. Hooper was in there and Margraf is going to concede a corner here. ESPN 2's presentation of U.S. Soccer is brought to you by Phillips. Technology should be as simple as the box it comes in. And by Bud Light, fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. So Charmaine Hooper is set to take this corner. Amazing numbers, 121 caps, 63 goals. And was MVP of the World All-Star Game in 1999. So a uh, few honors uh, on her resume as she gets set to take this corner. Towards the near post. Good looking ball and defended nicely there. 
And this is where the Abby Wombach penalty kick, the missed penalty kicks, become such a big issue. 2-0 going into the 72nd minute. That's a 3-0 game if, we, if the United States makes that going into halftime. Canada, if they're able to put one in here, all of a sudden it's an entirely different game. So Hooper will take it again. We went near post last time. Will she go there again? She does. Uh, it's a great one-time clear for Mally Wagner. And Wagner, uh, work ethic, very good today. She's looking great. She was playing in France. We had some players in Sweden. Ali was over in France, said she had a great time in Lyon. And a member of Santa Clara. Her 85th cap today with 18 goals. Won the Herman Trophy her senior year for best collegiate player. U.S. Uh, wanting to get a hold of it, and they do. they got some time and space here. Milbrick. The Fotopoulos lays it down for Hughes. Still Hughes. And he's going to earn a free kick. I've never seen that number 11 look so fast. Given that Jean, what an honor for her to wear that shirt and that jersey. <laughs> Lily. <laughs> Saw that number 11 moving pretty fast. Here's Christine Lily, top of the box. Wagner lets it go over the top. You can tell the minute she hit it. Well, Christine Lilly, one of the remaining five fabs still on the U.S. national team. What does her future hold? It's the team that keeps you going because if anyone, I think if you ask anyone that's been involved in any sport, they miss the locker room, they miss the players, and I think that's what keeps me going. And I still, I still feel good on the field. And when I feel like that's fading or I'm not making an impact or I'm hurting the team, that's when I, I'll know that it's time. Hope Solo collects it. So Christine Lilly arguably has been as influential as any player out here today. Oh, no question. I mean, she just... Every single game, that's what separates the good from the great. And you have a lot of people that play at the elite level that, to do it day in and day out like Christine does. And she sets such a great example for the team with her work rate, like we talked about with the GPS monitor. Hermes heads it back. Yeah, you mentioned the word consistency. Christine Lilly, we remind you again, her 296th cap today more than any player, male or female, in the world. Lang, but Lily's going to get there first. Keeps it alive to Milbrit. Tried to cut it back. Milbrit's going to earn the U.S. a corner. This portion of the match is presented by Home Depot as the U.S. now turning the pressure the other way back against Canada now in the 77th minute. Lily to take it. Petopoulos a target. Euclid is in there. So is Box. And towards LeBon. Boxed it out. Headed away by Chapman. Hooper tries to get it cleared. Here's Milbrick. Into the box. Chance here for the U.S. And just shot wide by Kat Reddick. Who was looking for her seventh goal. In a U.S. uniform. And Kat has been so dangerous on so many corner kicks over the years. Always around, sniffing around. Milbert just trying to get it back on the face. Kat finding a seam. Good turn. Just hits it wide. But again, she's just going to be sniffing in those gaps. As the Canadian defense is clearing, there's always these little pockets you can stand at to stay on side. Wagner. Additional player in the U.S. midfield making a difference, Julie. The additional player in midfield, do you think it's making a difference for the U.S. here in the second half? Well, the interesting thing with that, Glenn, is you lose a forward up top, and now Canada has a chance to play make a little bit more out of the back. They can get, get their outside back a little more forward because they don't have three forwards that they're trying to guard now and watch. The lefty. Hey. Greg Ryan may have been concerned about width. Wanting to bring the midfield wide players in. And a veteran move there by Lily, just getting her body between Lang and the ball and earning the free kick. 
here's another look at Christine Lilly. Doing a little good acting there. Did I just say that on the other Am I on camera on the Into the box it comes then. Actually, the back of actually, it's one of the things we need to get better at with the United States team, with Americans. It's just, you should watch the men play and at different levels, and they're so good at drawing pressure and drawing the foul in a legitimate way, and we're so dang honest. We just stay on our feet, stay on our feet. It's, you know, it's draw the, draw the pressure, and sometimes you're going to have to draw that foul with it. But you know what? I think that honesty is what also attracts a lot of people to the women's game. I mean, the, the acting, the game has been shipped at times is eternal. Uh, that one's cleared by Canada. Coming out of the middle was Randy Hermes. Played in Norway last year. Metopolis. Here's Hooper. To Lang. They set her there from Shannon Box, away from pressure. And this is where Canada is so dangerous. It's the 80th minute. It's 2-0. They just never die, though. They never give up. They were down 3-1 to Denmark in Europe. I think they came back to win it 4-3. An amazing game on their last tour. Uh, shows you that they do have, and it's a good point to bring up, tremendous fighting spirit. And they've increased their confidence against the U.S. I mean, you felt that when you were playing against Canada, correct? Oh, it's been a rivalry for so many years. And although the statistics with our games... We've won 28 out of 34, but that doesn't tell the whole story because in the last four years, the Canadian team has improved by leaps and bounds. The U.S. still leading the series over the last four years with six wins, a loss, and two ties, but as you said, it is uh, much more competitive. LeBlanc is off the line. Offside flag is up. Three, Rachel Wu. Um, play to go on, and this time we'll whistle this one. Well, you know, for years, people talking about Real Madrid coming over to the United States. They're finally coming. It's exciting news. The club of Beckham, Ronaldo, Zidane, Michael Owen, well, maybe Figo, and Raul will be coming to the U.S. for a two-game tour starting Saturday, July 16th from Soldier Field in Chicago. They face Chivas from Guadalajara. Then they go on to Carson, California to meet Landon Donovan in the Galaxy July 18th from the Home Depot Center. What a summer of soccer in this country. Hey, and don't forget, Gold Cup also coming up on July 6th. The U.S. has started off against Cuba. And then the MLS All-Stars going up against Brian McBride and Fulham. Uh, offside flag was up. And that attack was the top of so, What a summer. How do we keep up with all this? Real Madrid, I wish they had some better players on that team. Yeah. Jeez. Need a little more star quality. Wow. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it's really great. To, I think that MLS is now best invested in getting an opportunity to have an LA Galaxy uh, play against Real Madrid. And, it, and it's become such a global game. You know, and, and you see the reaction in the United States to these teams, and they're drawing huge crowds, which is great to see. These planes uh, blasting over here in Virginia Beach, it's because there's a naval station nearby. Time for a dangerous free kick here for Canada. So uh, they have also made a change in the meantime. Melissa Tancredi comes on and out goes Diana Matheson. Midfielder for a midfielder. Straight up swap. You've got Hooper over this. You've got Kara Lang, the 18 year old, over this. You've also got Christine Sinclair over this. Options abound for Canada here. Five-man wall for the U.S. Just over the top. And a decent-looking effort there from Hooper, but couldn't put it on target. This portion of the match is presented by Phillips. 83rd minute, U.S. 2-0 lead over Canada. Kolopny and Welsh. The goal scores, Kolopny getting her second in her 14th appearance. And Welsh getting her 19th. 28 appearances for the U.S., her sixth of the 2005 season. The leading U.S. scorer over at the Algarve Cup with five. Fotopoulos, good turn from Fotopoulos. 
He's got no Britain in the middle. Going to try and pick her out and broke it up nicely by Chapman. The pelvic. Been very composed for a young player. What have you uh, seen from her today as a right back? I've always liked Amy the Pelvis. She's, she's very skillful on the ball, very comfortable on the ball. She traditionally in Arizona State played a center back position, so probably playing outside back is a little uncomfortable for her, but already you can see that she, she's so comfortable playmaking. Speaking of comfort on the ball, there's Lily trying to pick out Nobrick. Greg Ryan talking about this three month off, six games, to, six days to prepare, and then a game. And he says the rhythm isn't ideal for us, but you know we did so well at the Algar Cup, coming in with only six days of training and going undefeated in a shutout, and continuing that shutout for the 2005 season. He has to be happy with having only 12 days of training, getting this team together and how they're looking. Here's Lily. Back in in Canada. Christine Lilly makes space for herself, cuts it back. Cuclis now. Christine Lilly has been dynamite on the ball today. And I, I really credit Glenn, the players, for their self-discipline and having largely six months of, of really no structural training, and yet they're coming in fit and they're, they're finding places to play and they're being creative about making sure when they come in, they're ready to go. It was the story of our team for decades before the league. Greg Ryan told us last night, he said, it's not going to be our best soccer. Long range shot from Box, who does have power from distance, off the mark. Now, let's take a look at the 2005 SP Award nominees for the best soccer player. Boy, you talk about names here. Mia Hamm, Brigitte Prince, Landon Donovan, Eddie Johnson. And how did Ronaldinho get on that list? That's what I started laughing about. And then Ronaldinho. How do you see? And don't forget, you can cash your vote by logging on to ESPN.com. Keyword is SB. Then watch ESPN Sunday, July 17th at 9 Eastern to see who wins that one. And a number of great candidates there. Ronaldinho uh, helping lead Barcelona. 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 I'm using the feminine Spanish. <laughs> Barcelona put the list in to the Spanish La Liga title. Of course, been in action for Brazil in the Confederations Cup. We beat Germany yesterday. Lily. Now we're getting to that critical last five minutes of the game. Both teams getting tired. This is when Canada is at its most dangerous. Ball from Reddick to the feet of Euclid. Back to Reddick. Hooper gets a bad ball there. Maybe a chance for Canada to get turned and attack. Has it been too methodical? It seemed they had the ability to get turned and really get out the U.S. defense, and they made a pass back that allowed the U.S. to get settled. You can see, though, that they're still sending players, or they're starting to send players. It took 86 minutes for Canada to start sending players, but now we got, I just saw Tank Reddy, who's got some fresh legs coming in. I was going to say, Julie, has it taken Evan Pellenrood and Canada long, too long to take some risk in this game. I mean, here we are in the 87th minute, and you're making the comment that they're finally committing people forward. Well, when you're playing a 4-3-3 where they're, where they're marking up against three forwards, you know, it, it makes the defenders a little hesitant to get forward. they got three forwards up there. So, but you got to take that risk. you got to gamble. you got to send them. And, and then the other component of that is you gotta you got to get to the, those balls and there's no numbers up top. They have no central midfield. They're shooting out of the midfield to give you numbers and help the forwards. And as far as risk, reminder, it is 2-0. And here's Lily. Maybe some room. Look at Christine Lily still working her way. Offside flag up. That's unfortunate for the United States. That could have been a very good counter-attacking opportunity. Box. He's going to try a ball over distance to Milbrick, who is sitting on 99 goals against Chapman. Slips a good ball. Fotopoulos, a chance to make it three. Just shot it wide. Oh, Tiffany Milbrick setting things up beautifully for Fotopoulos. I was just, I was just about to say, ah, oh, I wish 
Tiffany Milgren hadn't passed that ball, yet she's able to thread it into Fotopoulos. Good first touch, looking to just curl it around LeBlanc, bend a little ball in. Correct surface option, just didn't hit it quite right. And you know, we sit here today and we're talking a lot about the appearances and the goals of Tiffany Milbert. 200th appearance today, 99 goals she's sitting on. She's also got 61 assists for the U.S., so uh, she's also the king of the pass, as proven there. And where Tiffany Milbert is so dangerous is she loves to face up and go at him. And what happens when she does that, when she's attacking that back line, someone's got to step to her, and she's often drawing one, just not one, but two defenders, which shifts that whole back line, which then opens that ball up to Danielle Fotopoulos. Well, next week, don't forget uh, Tiffany Milbert going back to Portland and where she played her collegiate soccer. Our next soccer telecast takes us to Portland, Oregon, as the women take on the Ukraine. Coverage kicks off Sunday, July 10th at 6.30 Eastern. It's right here on ESPN2. ESPN and ABC, official broadcast partners of the 2006 World Cup in Major League Soccer. And I'll tell you what, that should be a very emotional day for Tiffany Milbert. Oh, no question for you. She has such a history in Portland. I mean, the people there love her, the fans love her, what she did at the University of Portland. Coming you know, back to play for your hometown is, is always a special moment. You know, we are talking a lot about Tiffany and, and her, her reemergence on the team. Let's go back to Brandi Chastain and, and her absence here today. Is there a void? Brandi is, when I talk about the outside backs and the ability of them to get forward and play make, I mean, that was Brandi Chastain. That's what she gave to this team. She was a forward that we converted into a back. And so she brought this flair that forward has. She, was, she loved, you know, playmaking on the ball, fainting one way. And, uh, and she had this great sense of when to attack and when to hold. Fans, fans certainly still missing her, Julie. Yes. This is such a difficult uh, situation. Box will come off. Wagner will come off. Marcy Miller will earn her first cap. And Lori Fair will come on, picking up her 118th. It's great to see some old faces back there. You talk about losing some of the veterans. you got a veteran back in, in Lori Fair. 2000 played alongside her in the 2000 Olympics. Into the box it comes, LeBlanc. Got a fist to it. U.S. still up 2-0 here. As things winding down. One minute of stoppage time added again into the box. It comes Fotopoulos. Chance to make it three. Left with a shot. Hits a side netting. Canada came out really fast on this ball. And Fotopoulos was trying to stay on size. We didn't have a referee raise the flag. But she looked to me like she was a little bit in an offside position. Lucky it didn't get called on that one. Almost a great scoring opportunity for the United States. U.S. still pushing here in Virginia Beach. Kalupni now, who is going the distance. As the left back for Greg Ryan. And we, we talked about at the top of the show, Greg Ryan trying new players, looking at different players, styles of players. Marcy Miller is a clear example of that. No prior caps for the national team. This is her first international appearance for the USA. She is a hard midfielder that used to play with the Atlanta Beat. And she's a tackler. She's a worker. Latham trying to make something happen. She's been a little bit silent as of late. Margaret. You know, what a game she's had at the back today. This afternoon, broken up so many plays. And, you know, Kate Margraff has always been surrounded by veterans and Joy Fawcett, Brandi Chastain. That'll do it. The debut of Greg Ryan officially as the head coach is a successful one, a 2-0 victory over Canada. Jalumni and Welsh, the goal scorers. And a big day as Tiffany Milbert gets her 200th cap. We'll be back to wrap it up after this. Smooth from the first taste. Refreshing every single time. The great taste of Bud Light. The summer is calling, and so are the friends. Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. Sport is sport. A foul's a foul. And a bat's a bat, even if it's flat. Ten feet on the west side is ten feet on the east side. Football is football. Unless it's...
football. Now, a win's a win, a loss is a loss. But no matter what, you better come with it. Because it's 90 feet to first, no matter where home is. Make a smooth approach. Make smooth contact with Electric Shave Pre-Shave Lotion. Stands up whiskers for up to a 52% closer shave. Electric Shave. Blade close. Electric smooth. Every day it's a battle between you and your feet. Now they're itching for a fight. Fight back with Gold Bond. Maximum strength medicine, foot powder, or cooling spray for maximum relief. For victory over wet, itchy feet. Gold Bond Foot Care. Victory over defeat. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, bind them. But this time, the magic is coming to you. The Lord of the Rings Motion Picture Trilogy, The Exhibition. At the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Welcome back to Virginia Beach and the Virginia Beach Sportsplex United States 2-0 victory over Canada in Greg Ryan's debut. Uh, we mentioned that we had outfitted Christine Lilly with a GPS unit. She ran 6.9 miles today, 3.7 in the first half, 3.2 in the second half. What does that tell you? That's a good day's work right <laughs> there, huh? General comment about today's game, uh, the first one under Greg Ryan, uh, how important was it to get a result and then also take a look at young players? I, I like the new look of the United States. I think, you know, obviously some things to work on, some consistency in getting the ball and the rhythm, but overall, good start for 2005 and for this new team. Good start for you too, Julie. The final score here in Virginia Beach, the U.S. 2, Canada 0. Our coverage of the U.S. women continues live Sunday, July 10th on ESPN2 from Portland, Oregon. They face Ukraine. Coming up next, the 2005 USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Julie Foudy. I'm Glenn Davis. So long from Virginia Beach. Absolutely gorgeous sunny day here and warm in Carson, California for the 2005 